here is another video to help us understand better what sound waves are and what makes them tick, so to speak. All right, so now we're going to look at periodic sound waves and what we call the displacement amplitude. In the previous video, we saw how a sound wave, a periodic sound wave, could be produced by a moving piston that causes the molecules to be compressed together, therefore forming higher pressure regions. And then when the piston moves back, forming some what we call rarefactions. So we have high pressure and low pressure regions, and those high and low pressure regions move through the air at the speed of sound. But what's not very, very well mis uh, understood is that the actual molecules don't actually move through the air at the speed of sound because they did 340 meters per second. You have wind blowing at 340 meters per second, and that would be like a very strong uh, hurricane or very strong tornado and destroy everything in its path. So that's not what's happening. What's happening is that the molecules actually vibrate back and forth at the same frequency as the generation of the pressure waves. So we have what we call displacement waves or displacement amplitudes, if we want to call them that way. So when the pressure builds, the displacement of molecules decreases. When the pressure builds in the other direction or when the, the pressure becomes lower, then the displacement gets greater in the other direction. So in other words, as the molecules are moving back and forth and they're displacing from their normal position, so let's say this molecule, let's take, let's take this one for example, it's going to be vibrating back and forth at the same frequency as the pressure waves were, were um, developed and or were produced, I should say. And, and so as they're moving back and forth, it causes regions of high and low pressure. And what it turns out that at the moment that the pressure wave reaches its maximum amplitude at that very same point, and let me draw the line so you can see it, the displacement goes to zero. So what happens is first the molecules are displaced and then they build up the pressure. As they build up the pressure, the molecules get pushed back into their normal position. So when the pressure is as highest, molecules are back into the normal position. Then as the pressure drops, then the molecules get, because they have, it's kind of like kinetic and potential energy. As the pressure drops, they have this extra velocity in the opposite direction. So they now start building up lower pressure because they're moving away from a region. So there's a rarefaction. So the molecules move away, move away. And so we have then a max displacement in the other direction at the point where we start getting lower and lower pressure. Then with lower pressure, molecules begin to move back in. So as they move back in, they move back to the normal position. They overshoot that position. They move beyond it, and pressure begins, begins to back up. As you see, there's this interplay between the motion of the molecules and the pressure caused by the movement of those molecules. They are in sync, but 90 degrees out of phase. So as this is a sine function, this then is a cosine function. So we can then describe the motion of the molecules within the air. And of course, the motion is simply a vibrational motion back and forth. They actually don't move along the line uh, of the sound wave. We can then say that the S, S stands for displacement, can be defined as the S max, which would be, of course, the maximum amplitude of the displacement, times the cosine, instead of sine, of kx minus omega t, which means they have the same wavelength defined by the wave number. Remember that k is defined as 2 pi over lambda, which is the wave number, and they have the same frequency. Remember, omega is defined as 2 pi times the oscillatory frequency. And notice that the only difference between the two is that they're 90 degrees out of phase. So you can see as the uh, pressure increases, the displacement of molecule decreases, and so forth. So again, notice that it is the displacement of the molecules that causes the pressure to go back to a higher pressure. It's just that it, the pressure increase lags the displacement increase by 90 degrees. And that's how the interplay between displacement molecules and pressure takes, takes place. And you can see then that we can define that as a sine and a cosine function. So this is called the pressure uh, displacement and therefore I shouldn't say pressure displacement but this is called the pressure equation and that's called the displacement equation and that's how we define the motion of sound in air.